Hey folks, this is Fernando doing another video for the Mars Survivalist. In this case, the topic is what happens when you get cut, when you get stabbed. Gruesome topic, no doubt. It's going to be a longer video as well, but I please ask you guys to have patience and stick around because you're going to be learning something today. And this is information that you may end up using if you ever get attacked and you use a knife to defend yourself or if you ever get attacked by someone with a knife so as to know what it is that you should be protecting from as well. Please don't leave any nasty comments. This is all information that it's out there. There's uh, countless uh, accounts, reports, uh, articles of, of uh, knife attack incidents and um, everything that I'm going to be talking about here can be easily found in, in books such as this one, Grey's Anatomy, explaining how the human body works. So keep that in mind as well. I'm going to be starting with a few facts here. And these are pretty much universal and common to most uh, knife incidents. First, most people don't even know that they're getting attacked with a knife. In most reports, in most cases, people talk about feeling punches, not even seeing the blade being used. This is especially true of smaller knives. We have to make a difference as well between small and larger knives. We're going to be getting here in a second. All right. But in most cases, most people don't even know they're getting stabbed, they're getting cut. The nature of the violent encounter itself makes for, you know, not collecting exactly all, all the little details going on and it's only afterwards that they realize they've been stabbed. Many people talk about only realizing when they feel something wet in their body. Some, they, uh, some people even have, have said that they thought they had urinated themselves because of fear only to touch that and realize it's actually blood. All right. So in many cases, again, you, will may, you maybe won't even realize that you're getting stabbed until you've been cut several times. Second, it is very bloody. It is more bloody than gunshot wounds because of the nature of the wounds created by knives, because of the amount of wounds created as well. And remember, a knife does not jam, even though we're going to be talking about something like that in a second, it does not jam like a, like a firearm. You never run out of ammunition. It is a very... It's like an extension of, of your will, of a, of a violent will against someone else. The knife is a pretty intimate in that way. And there's, I mean, there's cases in which people have been stabbed over a, a hundred times. Over a hundred times. Because, uh, especially in, 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 in passionate crimes, uh, in crimes involving uh, love and treason and lovers killing one another, this is the kind of thing that ends up happening as well. Finally, knives can fail to a point. Knives can break. Knives have breaks in the past during attacks. Knives have become detached from hilts, especially if the, if the tank was a narrow tank and a, a more cheap, uh, cheaper knives. Knives do break as well. They snap, the blades snap, even though you may think that a, a, a knife is pretty strong. The nature, again, of the violent encounter means that uh, when a knife is stuck in someone else's body and that person is fighting, twisting, you're twisting yourself, knives do snap during, during fights. There was um, an incident in which a woman was attacked by an assailant in her home. The, the, the attacker used a knife from his, this woman's uh, kitchen, uh, from the, a, a knife drawer. She, he picked a, a knife, attacked this woman, the knife broke during the attack, he went back to the kitchen, picked another knife and finished uh, the, 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 the attack, actually killing this woman in, in her own home. So it, it can happen. And one more important thing is that knives do fall out of people hand, people's hands. You may think that that's not likely. One of the things you, one of the mo most revealing things I've learned from uh, force and force training was, was just that, that it does fall out of people's hands. You may not think that it, um, it's likely to happen because you're, you're thinking you're going to be having a very strong grip on it. But no, because of the, of the way in which it, it ends up going, the nerves playing against you, um, the, the, the force involved on both sides, knives do fall out of, of your hands. So it's very important to keep a very, very 
firm grip. There was an incident um, recently, actually uh, in a couple of years ago, I think, where um, another attacker broke into a person's uh, house. He attacked a woman, uh, one of the, her kids, uh, an 11-year-old actually woke up and confronted the knife-wielding attacker who was hurting his mom. He went after him, this 11-year-old kid, and he got cut himself as well. One of the things that this boy said was that he did not know he was getting stabbed at that time. 11 year old being attacked by a knife wielding maniac in his 20s did not realize he was getting stabbed by this person. And one of the things that this boy did when, when he was being attacked by, by this maniac was go himself looking for a knife in his kitchen. And he went back to face the, the attacker and he dropped his knife. A knife unfortunately does have some disadvantages for uh, for example with children or women that may not have a, a, as much strength so you know whenever possible firearms would be better uh, especially because of this because you need quite a strong grip so as to not lose that knife during the fight. Now at, at the same time Knives can be extremely valuable and again every single one has one in their homes That's why I did quite a bit of emphasis on the use of knife for defense in my in my book the Mars survival manual Because I know that lots of people do not have guns, but lots of people everyone basically does have a knife So let's recap a little bit. You don't know as you're getting stabbed You may think that it's just punches and only later realize because of because of the blood that you are uh, you're getting stabbed only realize it later. There's uh, there was actually a, a recent case of a woman that she had a Russian lady attacked on the street She had a knife stuck on the back of her neck Just like that Like a six inch knife the, the picture is very impressive stuck on the back of her neck and she was only She only realized when he went back she went back home and I think her, her parents told her that she had a knife stuck in her in her neck. There was this this Chinese guy that was involved in a fight. The attacker came against him uh, with a knife. He didn't realize exactly what happened. First, he saw the knife at some point. Then he forgot about it because it just it just uh, disappeared. And a few years later, he was complaining about headaches and uh, and and some problems he was having when when swallowing. And they took an X-ray of his head. And if this was the the guy's head, he had a blade stuck. Across, I'm not kidding. You can actually find this in Google pretty easily. He had like a five-inch blade stuck across his head. What what seems to have happened is that the knife. A wielding attacker stabbed him in, in, in the neck and the face and there the knife broke as we said before knives do break the knife broke and the wound healed but the blade got stuck of course this is a one in a million case in which nothing more serious was it was cut with this um, in this attack but he had a, a five or six inch blade across his head. The x-ray is unbelievable, but apparently it does happen. Same with the lady that had a knife just buried in back of her head that way and not even realizing. Many freak accidents such as these. Now, the way in which a knife is, is gonna be um, causing damage and stopping your, uh, an attacker or, or hurting you if it's being used against you is Pretty different from gunshot wounds. Gunshot wounds, which I've covered in my previous video called What Happens When You Get Shot. In that case, you have a projectile going at pretty fast speeds. And there is hydraulic uh, shock and damage involved. Some people th think that it's a theory, that no, it's not. It's only the, the main wound channel. I don't want to get into all that. I did cover that to some extent in, in my previous video. So it really d does not make much sense to go over that as well. But just keep in mind that a gold dot 9mm projectile plus P projectile is going to be having the energy of 640 joules of energy. You may think, well, that means nothing to me. Okay, let's just put this into perspective a little bit. A karate expert throwing his best punch, which is going to be about twice as fast as a normal person, and putting as much as 10% of his body weight behind that punch, is going to be punching with a force of 400 joules. All right, see the difference? 400 joules 
Karate Guy Expert versus 9mm projectile at uh, from gold lot, I think it was 115 grains, 125 grains plus P projectile, 640 joules, and this is energy delivered by a, a lead projectile expanding inside your body. So no wonder why this projectile is particularly effective and why gunshot wounds in general are effective. In general, you could say that, and this does vary greatly depending on the research that you're looking at. In in general, gunshot wounds are are lethal about 20% uh, of the cases. Again, there's different uh, studies, some people say more, some people say less, 15%, 30%, give or take, you could say that. And knife wounds are lethal in about 10 to 15% of, of the cases. Knives versus guns, all right? This is basically a little bit of, so as you have an idea of, of how lethal each one is. There is a difference, of course, in terms of small knives and large knives. A knife is basically going to be causing damage by stopping someone because of blood loss. Alright, blood loss. Yes, you're bleeding because of the wounds caused by this knife, by a knife, or because of the damage to organs all right you either bleed out or you get an organ that is being damaged for example someone comes with a machete and slams it over your head and cuts your brain in half yes that is indeed going to be stopping you no doubt whatsoever but here is where we talk about the difference between small knives and larger knives larger knives will have more of a it will also have not only cutting damage it's not only going to be cutting stabbing is also going to be crushing so you may have bones smashed and broken because of a of a larger knife heavier knife that's going to be also causing blunt damage in your body smaller knives will mostly be about blood loss in your body you know that's that not saying that some other organs may be affected as well if you we have the human body here suppose that here we have a, a torso of a guy okay and we have the heart here and this actually happened, I think it was last year in London, a kid got attacked by a gang, a single knife wound, stabbed in the heart, kill him right there. Of course, get an, a knife through the heart, you're pretty much dead, there's very little that can be done to save you. And this was probably a smaller knife, you don't need a huge knife to cause that type of, of damage. To the head, to the brain, you're probably not going to be getting there with, with a smaller knife unless you put quite a bit of, of, of force to it, but with a larger blade uh, smashing to it, uh, yes. Same for uh, arms, you may end up breaking arms with a, with a larger knife or if someone is attacking you and you put up your, your hands in, in a classic uh, defensive in instinctive defensive stances where you put up your hands so as to protect yourself with a larger knife in enough swing you're gonna be losing limbs fingers or whatever is in the way there's basically no defense against uh, an attack with a larger knife being swung against you other than not being in that place where a knife is going uh, you know something similar goes for smaller knives there's really not much you can do that's why you basically want to avoid knives knife fights as much as possible they are bloody and if both sides do have a knife it is gonna be a very nasty picture lots of blood involved and again it doesn't run out of ammunition and anything that you touch that gets into contact with a blade is gonna be getting cut so we're talking about a uh, damage to yeah, organs that keep you alive such as your heart your brain also you, you you may be getting hurt in your in your livers as well let's look take a look here at what happens specifically in the human body for a second let's draw our guy yeah I'm not as good as I once used to be with these things folks again have a little bit of patience with me and if you haven't learned something already you will pretty soon so we have our person here we have most most of us actually do have one of these a heart <laughs> yeah <laughs> and your heart is gonna be pumping about five between five uh, between four 
four and six liters per minute. Now that's for someone that is rested. If we're talking about even, for example, a, a professional athlete while doing exercise and in intense physical activity, it, it may be up to 30 liters per minute pumping through your heart. You basically have in your body, in your circulatory system, sorry for my crappy English folks, you know, I'm, it's not my, my, <laughs> my language, I speak Spanish, so I'm doing my best here. You have arteries and veins. Your arteries are part of your high pressure system. I remember one of my friends when I was little, about 13 years old in school, I was uh, having my birthday party at home, one of my friends fell, fell against a fence and a small wire punctured his, his arm right about here. And he did this, he covered his hand like that and we went inside in, into the bathroom because he was bleeding and he was covering like this. My mom came there and said, okay, move your hand away so I can see what, see what happened. He said, no, it's bleeding. And when he did this, it started squirting blood out of it like crazy. It, it made a mess in the mirror. It just, it, it was like one of those uh, water guns, one of those squirt guns just came out like that. That's arterial bleeding. Arterial bleeding will bleed that way, it will be like squirts coming out and it is the, the high pressure part of your system. That is blood being pumped from your heart away from, it's oxygenated blood being pumped away from your heart at high pressure. And that's your arteries. Your veins are going to be coming into the heart and it's a different type of blood. Artery blood is going to be bright red color and it's going to be bleeding much more than, than veins. Veins, uh, the blood coming from veins is usually going to be darker, almost brown in color. So there's a difference and that's how you tell if, the, if what you see bleeding is actually artery blood or, or vein blood. A vein, a puncture vein is going to be more of a oozing type of bleeding in comparison. Now, what happens in specific parts of the body when, uh, when slashed or stabbed? Of course, you already may have in mind that you want to avoid as much as possible arterial bleeding. The main arteries you have in the body, you, well, you have, you have your heart, of course, that you want to avoid. You have the aorta here, which is, which is a main blood vessel that, again, if it gets stabbed in here with the internal bleeding alone, you're pretty much done for in, in a very short period of time. You have your femoral artery. You may have heard of this. It's on the inside of your thigh, about this region, give or take. Guys, I'm no doctor, I'm just someone that did a little bit more research and learned a thing or two and it's trying to share this with you folks. Femoral, femoral artery. Uh, the grandchild of ex-Argentine president uh, Alfonsin, she was, uh, I think she was 13, 14 years old. She was in school running around like a normal kid and without realizing she went through a glass uh, door and she had bad enough luck that she got cut in her femoral artery by a, by a piece of glass. Uh, the principal was uh, interviewed later by, by a TV reporter and I remember her face, she just freaked out. She said that there was no way, she just could not stop the, that bleeding. She, she did what, what she thought she had to do, pressure. She found no way of, of stopping that bleeding and that girl that, uh, died that day. In just a matter of minutes, she, she bled out. You have about uh, five, six liters of blood in your body and the amount of blood you can lose uh, depends of course uh, depending on the size of the person. Give or take, you can, when you lose one liter to 1.5 liters, that's when you start feeling weak and dizzy. All right, one and between one and 1.5 liters. When you lose two liters, you lose consciousness. You go unconscious when you lose two liters of blood. Again, give or take. Two liters of blood, you're pretty much uh, out of the fight if, if you're ever involved in one. So one between one and two liters is, is basically how much you can take until you're, you're certainly impaired to some degree. So the femoral artery, definitely one of those that you want to avoid getting cut. Uh, the femoral artery is going to be bleeding about 638 milliliters per minute. 
six, uh, oh, yeah, about half a liter per minute. Now this may be as much as four times as much when excited, when involved in a fight, when doing an intense physical activity like fighting for your life. Your heart rate goes up, the heart rate of your attacker goes up, and this may bleed between two times, three times, even four times as much. Okay, keep that in mind there for a second. Then you have, you have also your axillary artery that goes about here between above your armpit and just under your shoulder. Here you have your axillary axillary artery. This may it's it, it's going to be having a, a flow. Um, a blood flow of 230 milliliters per minute and when doing exercise, doing intense exercise it's gonna be pumping about 940 milliliters per minute almost a liter again you see almost four times as much blood pumping through this artery the artery gets bigger expands gets bigger and more blood pumps through it so 904 almost a liter per minute in your axillary artery you also have your brachial artery here on the inside of your you know on the, the elbow on the inside you have your brachial artery and that's brachial artery which is when rested 72 milliliters per minute not that bad. Now this may be again three or four times as much when doing an intense uh, physical activity or exercise. So let's suppose here for a second that you are um, you're you're a lady. You're preparing dinner. Uh, someone breaks into your house and is uh, you're suddenly facing an attacker fighting for your life this person uh, this attacker throws you to the floor you were just preparing food and you had a small knife with you uh, this this uh, this uh, social predator throws you to the floor and tries to pin you down as many times happens with with rapists and such he tries to uh, go for a mount like you see in MMA uh, mixed martial arts uh, climbing on top of you you may have this presented as a good target to go for now one of the things that you learn from from the knife fights is that it's not only just not just one one slash you you maybe want to slash here 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 and here as well before going for something more visible something where the attacker may be realizing remember what we talked about before people don't even know that they're getting stabbed so uh, an attacker uh, climbing on top of you trying to pin you down you may be causing this wound and by the time he realizes what's happening, you keep in mind he is he is excited. He is his blood is is pumping very fast through through his body. His heart rate is very fast. So one, two, three, four wounds in less than thirty seconds. That person is no longer a threat to you. Keep that in mind. Same thing in the other way around. You want to avoid these things being done to you when attacked by someone with a knife. When it comes to the neck, it is um, it is interesting. There's I have it written here somewhere. There's a study made by the University of Texas, Dr. Herve Lebeuf, Lebeuf. Sorry, don't know the last name. So I spell it well. And Dr. Francis B. Quinn. They they actually did an interesting report. Again, all of this is found online. And they were, they were doing a report on neck injuries, and they were saying that when when uh, major blood vessels are injured in a neck injury, the fatality rate is as much as 65%. Remember what we talked about with, with guns, with gunshot wounds, about 20% fatality rate. Uh, a severe artery in your neck, you're talking about 65% fatality. Doctors uh, Herve Lebeuf and Francis Quinn said that this includes people that only don't even make it to the hospital. They die before the ambulance brings them back to the hospital. 65%, folks. This is uh, this is uh, something you definitely want to avoid by all by all means. In your neck, you have your carotid artery, right, left side. The carotid artery. 
carotid artery how much blood is it gonna be pumping 238 milliliters per minute this is in rested condition when excited, when doing physical activity, when fighting, when your heart rate goes up, it may be again two, three times as much. So, we're talking about you can only lose two liters before losing consciousness, and you get cut here, here, in 30 minutes, in 30 seconds, sorry, 30 seconds, one, two, three cuts. And besides, you're cutting other things as well. It, with a couple of these cuts you're pretty much done for in 30 seconds or, or less depending on how many cuts have been done cuts uh, stab wounds and slashes are very fast you don't even realize they're happening uh, by the time you realize that something is wet and sticky in your body you've already bled quite a bit fatality rate of 65% on neck wounds of course your face as well you have your eyes uh, and, and, and face face wounds do bleed quite a bit. Uh, one of the books that I that I did quite a bit of research when, when writing myself about uh, use of knives for defense was this book Esgrima Criosha, which reveals uh, quite a few details on on how um, gauchos in South America fought with knives. One of the favorite cuts was to the face because uh, when cutting uh, here in the head above the eyebrow this bleeds quite a bit and blinds the person that the gaucho was fighting with another common uh, um, attack according to this book was what it's called tirar las tripas tirar las tripas in spanish means dropping the guts that is basically folks uh, eviscerating the person and this is much easier done than it may sound and I suggest not doing this but if you look it up in in Google you look up the images of knife wounds you will see a few of these the restoration is if the if the um, stomach region the, um, the torso the lower torso is cut a slash here if you get slashed like that what's gonna be happening is that all your insides are gonna be coming out not just a little bit i'm talking of meters of guts coming out even a small slash a few inches it is it is enough for most well not most but significant amount of intestines coming out in impressive ways the the lower torso you have your intestines in there at a, quite a bit of pressure anything that cuts through your abdomen that way is going to be causing this to come up come out in this I'm not this isn't this isn't just a drawing this is actually how it would look like okay it would look like something like this if you don't believe me you can look it up in Google even though it's not for the faint of heart because it's pretty impressive but a small cut uh, to the abdomen is gonna be causing your intestines to come out like that avoid that at all costs that's why and yeah this may be of interest to you folks or not just uh, trying to provide as much information as possible as always that's why in in Creole fighting try and find the picture now don't worry it's nothing that nasty but you see this is a, a gaucho the typical gaucho would use his poncho a piece of cloth or jacket would be the, the modern equivalent he has his knife he has the, the poncho used as a shield to catch the other guy's knife and he has a pretty big belt the pretty big belt was not only a fashion statement at the time it was also considered a piece of armor you see these belts with these silver buttons and such uh, these were actually coins back in the day was a way of showing your wealth putting your putting those silver coins and this relates folks to when I talk about precious metals as well it was a, it was a way of, of having precious metals in your in your in your body in your belt in case you lost everything at least you had your belt with pieces of silver but it was also a way of having some sort of armor protecting the gut same these belts as well you see these belts with pieces of chains as well here so it was either buttons like a combination of leather and and stitches of and metal buttons there or just chains protecting the 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 torso 
protecting the lower torso, protecting the abdomen from these specific cuts. Now what happens if you get stabbed in the upper, in the upper torso? Well here you have your lungs and this is somewhat similar to puncture wounds because of gunshot wounds. What happens is that when there's a, a puncture here, yes you may have a, a lung injured and you're bleeding on the inside of the, of the lung which is uh, nasty enough as it is, but even just the penetration of of the upper torso, uh, what happens is that there's a decompression here. You basically breathe because of your uh, di uh, diaphragm here in the middle of your of your torso going up and down. When it goes down, your lungs inflate like a balloon. When there's a hole here and you have a pneumothorax, what it's called a, a, a sucking chest wound, you're not able to keep that uh, vacuum from happening and you're not able to inflate that uh, that balloon, your lungs, when it goes down. When the, the diaphragm goes down, what happens is that uh, air starts leaking through here. When it goes up, it comes, comes out and you have these uh, bloody bubbles coming here, that's why it's called a sucking chest wound. So that's something that may happen as well when stabbed in, in the torso. So of course avoid at all costs stabbing in, in getting stabbed in the heart and your aorta as well and of course yes a carotid artery and especially the lower part in, on the right side I believe it is that you have the aorta coming up so a stab here in the lower right side of the, of the neck would be pretty pretty bad for you absolutely so so folks uh, I think I covered uh, enough of what happens uh, when you get cut when you get stabbed these are all this is just all information for you folks to keep in mind if you like this uh, this kind of topic I, I try covering a little bit of everything uh, especially things that you don't hear being mentioned as much uh, so you may want to be subscribing for more stuff coming up in the future Folks, if there's anything else that you'd like me to talk about and cover in future videos, just as always, let me know. I welcome, as long as they are <laughs> made respectfully, comments and all that, I'm all for that. I'm also here to learn from your comments as well, which is it's great when, when you make them. Guys, have a great day as always. Take care and <laughs> have, a, have a great day. See you on our next video.